Hey there, Millie. I have to say, I was so shocked to see you today. I mean, I was not expecting a family as poor as yours to come walking through my door at all. But I didn't really have much else to do right then, so thanks for helping me kill some time. <laughs> Emily, I can't believe that you have the guts to message me like this after what you did. I don't know what you mean. I was just protecting my store when I saw you reach for some of the products. We can't just let any old riffraff come inside and touch all our precious jewelry, you know? Especially some shabby poor people like yourselves. That's why I kicked you all out. You didn't belong in a store like mine. I was only doing my job of protecting our products from less than savory customers. How dare you talk to me as if I did anything wrong when you all were the people who went somewhere you didn't belong to in the first place. If you thought I was going to go easy on you just because we used to be classmates, you really don't know a thing about me. I don't believe this. You know we all went into that store to help my mom celebrate her 60th birthday. Do you realize that you completely ruined her day when you kicked us out? Not only that, but while you were throwing us out, you made me fall and rip my dress. Well, it sounds to me like all I did was remind you of your place in this world. And just what was that supposed to mean, huh? Oh, please. I know your parents own some kind of factory or something, but I also know that it's in some little podunk town and that you're just another nobody on the assembly line. My store is the last place you should have thought about going into. We hold some of the finest pieces designed by expert craftsmen from all over the world. We're just as much of a gallery as we are a store. And I know that you don't even have enough money to afford touching one of those pieces. So the moment I saw your finger touch the middle of that necklace chain, I knew I had the green light to throw you out. That doesn't even make any sense. Do you really still think that you were totally justified in doing that? Justified? <laughs> And just why would I have to even justify myself? If anything, I was doing you a favor by reminding you of your place. <laughs> now look, I'm very aware that my parents don't own some huge corporation or anything. But they've owned that factory for years and have attracted skilled employees that have netted them loyal customers. I think it's an amazing success that you're only judging from the surface. Oh please, don't you try and talk to me about skilled workers. Besides, they're probably just a bunch of old geezers who couldn't get a job doing anything else. It's less of a factory and more of a retirement home. And it's no wonder your business does so poorly if that's all you hire. They can barely even work. Do not insult all the great employees that I work with at the factory. I'm not insulting anyone. I'm just telling the truth, that's all. You're hiring people on death door, and that's probably why your business is about to go under. And if your parents are running a store as stupidly as that, then I'm sure your sense of how things are going is even worse. But then again, your parents are poor too, so I guess there was never any point in expecting anything great from them. Hey, I saw you open my messages. They're all marked as red. Don't ignore me. You answer me right this second. Why would I want to carry on a conversation with someone who's doing nothing but insulting me and the people that I care about? I already told you that I'm not making fun of anyone or anything like that. I'm just telling you the truth about your situation. Really? Because all you've been doing is calling my parents and I dumb and poor. And just what did we do to make you this mad at us anyways? Why do you hate us? Oh, I don't hate you at all. It's more just like I think it would be better if you never existed. Why would you say something like that? I say it because ever since we were little, you've always had just the absolute worst taste in what was fancy and what wasn't. I remember in art class, you would always score way lower than me. And then in other classes, you would be making such a racket on the keyboard that I could just couldn't concentrate on anything at all. Plus, you were always doing all those stupid little brain teasers in class and were a total nerd. I've never met someone so nerdy, so weird, so brainy before in all my life. That's why I wish you never existed. Are you kidding me? Is that really the reason you're going to give me? What of it? 
You have a problem with any of what I just said? When I saw you come into my store today in those shabby clothes, it brought back years of resentment towards you. That's why I ended up kicking you hard when I did throw you out of the store. I guess I just let my anger get the better of me. But you were the one who was totally underdressed for my store. You were the one who should have known better. I don't know why you insist on talking down to me as if I was the same person from high school. In fact, I bet that I have a much nicer standard of living than you can even imagine. You don't have to lie to me, you know. I know who you really are deep down. For example, knowing you, I bet you couldn't even hack it in your parents' factory. You probably found some way to work from home and you've been doing that ever since, just so that way you don't have to go outside. So maybe you should think about just who it is you're talking to before you open your poor ignorant mouth. What is even the point of talking to you if you're going to spin every little thing that I say into another way to call me poor? Besides, I'll have you know that the clothes I was wearing today were designed by my sister who works in the fashion industry. I don't, really don't think a poor person could have afforded the outfit I had. Are you trying to compare your sister to a real fashion designer? I remember your sister. And she was even more stupid than you. Not to mention she couldn't draw to save her life. Do you really expect me to believe that she's some bigwig fashionista or something? Your clothes looked about as poor as you are. And if they were handmade clothes from your sister, then it explains why the material was so cheap and why it rips so easily. Or was that all part of your sister's design? <laughs> or maybe you're just lying about your sister and you actually stole those clothes. I wouldn't put it past you. Are you kidding me right now? What is your deal, Emily? What are you talking about? I don't have a deal, Millie. Ugh, I'm seriously so sick of having to put up with you. What I was wearing was the first outfit that my sister ever designed and produced. I didn't steal anything. Besides, you were the one getting physical with potential customers before throwing them out. Well, just know that you're not going to get away with this. I'll report you. And just who is going to listen to what some poor little nobody has to say, huh? You need to wake up and face reality, Millie. Nobody cares about what someone like you has to say about someone so far above them like you should have never walked into my store today. And you certainly should have never tried to touch any of the merchandise. That's why I really had to kick you out. But if you're looking for someone to blame for all of that, you can only turn to yourself. It's so tiring having to explain over and over again to a stupid person about just how stupid they really are. And the fact that you didn't know you were going to be thrown out for what you did just proves to me how stupid you really are. If only you were just a little bit smarter, then I wouldn't have to waste so much time repeating myself to you. Except you do realize that one of the customers you threw out was a CEO, don't you? <laughs> Are you still trying to scare me? I don't know if I'd call this owner of some crappy little country factory a CEO. It's about as truthful as saying that your sister is a fashion designer. <laughs> You're just a weird, nerdy little shut-in who doesn't know anything about the real world. You can say that all you'd like, but I know that family is full of people who are way better people than you. And not that money matters for every little thing, but my family is not poor. In fact, I think it's fair to say that we're actually quite wealthy, actually. My parents work really hard to run their business and even manage to send both my sister and I to college. And thanks to all the support from them, my sister was able to pursue her dream of being a fashion designer. She always used to keep herself up so late throughout the night, working on her designs, that it's clear she had real talent for it. And maybe I don't have as clear a vision as my sister of what I'd like to do for the rest of my life, but I have skills too. It's true that you were always better at art than me, and did have a sharper eye for aesthetics, but that's why I'm more than happy to step back and cheer my sister on. Not only that, but every single employee that works for my parents is a skilled and experienced veteran of their craft who all have my respect for what they do. And yet, you have the gall to insult every single person in this world that I have respect for. I won't forgive you for this. I'll make you pay, Emily. All I'm hearing are the empty threats of a sore loser who knows that the words are going to be the only thing they'll have to use against someone so much better than them. <laughs> I can't believe you would trick me the way that you did! What is it now, Emily? 
What could you possibly want to talk to me about now? Don't you try and play dumb with me, Millie! I had no idea you were getting part of the ring collection from your mom's workshop! And why would you and your mom dress up as poor people to visit my store? You totally had me fooled! It's as if you were trying to get yourselves kicked out because you knew that I would get in trouble for it! And now I am getting in trouble! I heard your mom is canceling her contract with our store! Well, you'd better tell her to knock it off! And just who do you think you are to tell my mom what to do when you keep looking down on us like this? But it isn't fair! You two tricked me! If I knew who your mom really was, then I would have never treated you two that, the way that I did. I thought she just ran some tiny little place out in the middle of nowhere! Well, you're right about that. It is a small place and it is quite remote. The building looks quite shabby and run down from the outside, and it's true that most of the staff are stubborn old people. But they're also all imbued with pride and experience for their craft that shines through in every single piece that they produce. You've said so yourself, that your store only takes some of the best works from some of the world's leading jewelers. Well, I'm proud to say that my mom's workshop has many of those people working in it. And yes, you've insisted on continuing to insult my family's work and referring to the place as an old folks home rather than a business. Well, all it took was me mentioning all that you said to my mom, all that you said to her about her staff, for her to decide that she didn't want to do business with your store anymore. But I was only being honest. I mean, you said so yourself. It's all old people there. It's because you can't get over your age that my mom is choosing to end doing any business with you. And even if you weren't constantly putting down the staff that she cares about so much, you still threw out the owner of one of your partners from the store. So of course it's natural that that person wouldn't want to do any more business with you. And until you admit what you did was wrong and apologize for it, you're not going to be seeing any more pieces from my mom's workshop. I'm afraid that these people are quite set in their ways and won't budge when it comes to this. <laughs> do you really think I'd fold for you all so easily? You think you're the only jewelers in the world? I'll just find people who do what your workshop does, but for cheaper. It's time for all those geezers to go into retirement and for a new generation of artists to step forward. So if me doing this drives them to work less, so be it. We just got a new company president and she's always talking about driving our business in a new direction. So if you really thought that you could take us down just like that, you're sorely mistaken. Besides, the store security cameras never caught me kicking you out. So there's no real proof that it happened. No one is ever going to believe you about any of this. I don't care about any of that. I was just letting you know why my mom made the decision that she did. She also wanted me to tell you that you've made a powerful enemy with us and that you have no idea what's coming your way. You know, I rarely see my mom get this mad. Normally, she's just a patient, kind woman. Well, good luck punishing me for anything when you don't have any evidence of it. It'll just be your word against mine, and then I'll win. Um, hello. I'm not quite sure what to do in this sort of situation, but my boss gave me this phone number and told me to call you. I was in the middle of work and was told that I would need to apologize to you. But I'm not even sure who you are, so what do I need to apologize to you about? Oh, I take it you must be Emily. Well, I happen to be the one who called your boss to report the incident that happened when I tried going into your store the other day. But I don't get it. I've never seen my boss this panicked before. She wouldn't even listen to what I was trying to tell her. And yes, I assume I still haven't introduced myself yet. My name is Julia. I assume just from that that you've heard of me, right? Wait a second. You mean Julia? As in that Julia? As in the world famous jeweler and trendsetter Julia? Well, I prefer to just think of myself as a jeweler and designer, but yes, I suppose those other words do apply to me as well. If you'd like, I can stop by and bring you my business card if you don't believe me. I am so, so sorry. I had no idea that my boss had given me the phone number for THE Julia. It's truly an honor. And I would also just like to say how sorry I am for the misunderstanding between us yesterday. Well, while well, I do appreciate the apology, I'm more curious about why you thought it was okay to treat two potential customers the way you did in the first place. I'm really sorry. It was really just a big mix-up. I truly had no idea who you were. And I had never treated any customer before you in that manner. I swear it was just a freak accident. But that's a lie, isn't it? There was another time when you threw customers out before this. Does the name Millie ring any bells? Oh. 
did you hear about Millie from my boss? Well, you see, we've actually been friends since we were young, so I didn't think she was really there to be a customer. And she was wearing horrible clothes and just didn't look like she belonged in the store at all. Not only that, but she was about to put her grubby hands all over your jewelry. And your pieces have always been my favorite, so I was just trying to keep them clean for the real customers. I just didn't want someone like Millie leaving any smudges or scratches to our valuable pieces. I see, so that's your version of events then, is it? Well, I suppose that settles it then. From this day on, I no longer am going to do any business with your store. Wait, hold on. Julia, you can't be serious. Of course I am. You disrespected someone that I have great admiration for. I simply can't do business with people who treat others like that. You don't mean to say that you have a great admiration for Millie, right? Of course I do. You might not know this, but Millie happens to be my older sister. Wait a second. You mean you're the same Julia that could barely even draw when she was little? That's right, and I understand from Millie that you had some very strong opinions about me. Although you weren't entirely wrong, it's true that I struggled in my first art classes, and many of my past designs were rejected when I submitted them. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to stand up for my little sister. She may not have the mind of an artist, but when it comes to math, she's one of the brightest people that I've ever seen. And she does things I never even knew you could do on a laptop. I'm sure that the day is going to come when even I get jealous of her success. But I just use those feelings to help push myself further into my artwork. One of my latest ideas has very much been a back to basics approach. I looked over some of my oldest designs from when I was in high school, and the rich mix of colors and patterns brought back a deep sense of nostalgia for me. I've been looking for something unique and revolutionary, and when I created a test piece and gave it to my sister to wear, she was overjoyed with it. Call it childish, but I knew that if my big sister liked it, that meant it was good. And yet, you not only insulted and disrespected my sister, but you also ripped my new design. I can't forgive you for any of that. But wait, you can't cancel your contract with us because of that? That was personal and this is business. I've been thinking about a lot lately. I don't want to think personal feelings should get in the way of business. And I know that losing this contract is going to affect my mom's business too. But my mom stood by me and told me that I needed to make the decisions that would allow me to sleep at night. It also helped that she was furious with you. More angry than I've ever seen her before, to be honest. Wait, Julia, please, surely we could talk this out. I think we can both see that this is just one huge mistake, right? I had no idea about any of this. It's far too late to try and apologize for this now. But I really am sorry. You have to believe me. Please... Please don't cancel your contract. I'm begging you. I've already made up my mind, but you can only blame yourself for this. But you don't want to do this. It'll hurt your reputation if you want to work with any other stores, and you'll still have to pay out your end for breaking the contract. Not to mention that your sister could be seen as committing fraud. I mean, she came into my store dressed in a ridiculous outfit and hid who her family was. She baited me into acting the way I did. That's a crime. You wouldn't want anything to fall on your sister, would you? Are you threatening my sister with a lawsuit? Give it your best shot, but I know that you don't have a chance at winning against us. <coughs> Millie? Are you there? Please, you have to talk to your sister for me. She's taking this way too far, and now everyone is blaming me for losing the Julia contract. I mean, that would probably be because it's all your fault that Julia wanted to stop working with your store, right? Of course it isn't my fault. It's all yours and your sister's fault, and now our business is falling apart. Not only that, but I'm being served with a fine from my company for damaging potential profit. They're going to fire me and sue me for the trouble that they think I caused them. But I didn't even do anything wrong. This is all your fault. You tricked me and caused all this to happen. You have to pay me the money I need to get out of this. You did this to me. <laughs> oh, Emily, so sorry I didn't get back to you. I read all your messages, but I'm just really busy with more important things right now. Don't you lie to me, you little shut-in. I know that you're just buying time for yourself. 
I really don't have any need to do that, though. I mean, you've already been fired and your job is charging you for the damages you caused. Not to mention the lawsuit you're getting from me after you literally kicked me out. But you can't do that! By the time this is all over, I'm going to end up owing people over $100,000! Oh, right. That's quite a large sum, isn't it? Oh well, you'll still have to pay it. After all, someone needs to accept responsibility for all that's happened. Th th this isn't fair! I don't have that kind of money! I am not a CEO or something like that! I guess sometimes I forget normal people can't pay those kinds of fees. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you remember how I always used to be good with numbers in high school, right? Well, I took those skills and honed them over the years, as I learned about the stock market. So yes, I do work from home. But only as an incredibly successful day trader. So you just... invest money for a living? Pretty much, yes. The rest of my family all took over artistically creative paths, but I ended up going into the numbers route. We all stick by each other and help each other out when we need it. But why didn't you ever tell me any of this before now? Why do you think you're entitled to every single detail about my private life after the way you've treated me? No, 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 no. This isn't fair. I'm better than you. I'm not supposed to lose to you. Please, you need to pay off all my debt for me. I know you have the money for it now. Emily, this is not going to happen. But good luck with everything. See ya. After that, Emily ended up with a ton of debt thanks to all of her legal fees. Had no choice but to take whatever jobs were immediately available to her to begin paying them down. Since she had a criminal record after my lawsuit against her, however, the only places that would hire her were factories with lots of manual labor. Hearing that she had been fired, my sister decided to begin producing jewelry for the store Emily had previously worked at, much to the relief of the employees under my mom. As for me, I went back to working as normal, investing money and earning a living that way. It's true that I don't meet many people through my work, but I also have more than enough leeway to take a break and spend time with my family if I want. I feel so lucky to have such a tight-knit unit that will always stand up for each other when there's trouble. I may have chosen a different path than the rest of my family, but it hasn't stopped us from being a family one bit. And finally, as for Emily, I only hope that if she ever managed to claw her way out of all that debt, that she'll learn not to judge people based on their appearance.